How's it going everybody? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials and some more threading tutorials. And in the last video, we were looking at daemons and really cool stuff. Uh, I actually erased all of the daemon code that I had here, and I was left with the, the call and the, cre the creation and the call of our thread. And I'm going to put uh, our next thread back in there. I just called uh, our next thread and our next thread. And the target is still uh, due after that same function that I had up here that just sort of adds to... Um, X, the X value that we're that we're sharing between these two threads. It's a it's a shared resource, you see. So if I go ahead and run this the way that it is right now, I'll get over to my uh, my terminal, and if I were to run Python us threading, we get 300, 600, 300, 600, and every now and again the thread will actually screw up. Like 562 and 600, that's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to print out x when it's at 300, right? And it's supposed to print out x when it's at 600. Even after we've changed some things, like this right here, we're adding to x, but the thread is overlapping each other. How do we how do we freaking fix that? It's, it's really annoying, right? Sometimes we'll be accessing a resource in one thread and that same resource in another thread, and as you can see, 562, that's not 300 like we want it to be. Like, every now and again, it'll screw up. The threads are just overlapping each other. So, we have to, oh, look, this 600 and then 300, that, what, what kind of sense does that make? You'll see this happen every now and again in your threads. And we're good programmers, right? We're, we're pragmatic programmers, and we never want to see this happen. So, 492, what the heck? We have to fix this. We know that we can, right? We're programmers. So this allows us to get into the idea of locks. And locks are interesting because they don't allow one thread to finish dealing with one, to start dealing with one shared research. Sorry, let me try that again. Locks don't allow one thread to start dealing with one shared resource before another thread is finished dealing with one shared resource. It's kind of similar to join in that it isn't allowing one thread to begin, except the thread has already begun, it's just not modifying the resources that we want them to until we said that the lock is cleared. Locks are very simple. All they have are these options. They can only be acquired, which is where uh, a thread has a lock, and they can only be released where a thread doesn't have a lock. So let's say a lock can equal threading, the, the module name, and lock. It's a new object, it's just a capital L like we saw in thread, capital T. So there it is. Now we want to be able to pass that back and forth between the functions, between our threads that we, write, that we create. So lock has to be global in all of those. So global lock and global lock. Okay. Now when we run this, Nothing is really changing. It's the exact same setup that we had before. Still having problems. But we can modify this. We can say that our thread, the first thread that we run, that's going to work through X up until it's 300, right? So let's say this lock has to be acquired first. Lock has to acquire. Now, and if I run this... Nothing happens, but we can set up a try statement, and that's what's going to only run if the lock is acquired. Try all this, that's a new block, and then if we finish all of those, when we are done and we have the lock, we can use lock.release. Now, in the next function, in our do after function, we have the same setup. Lock.acquire over here. We don't need semicolons or anything like that. And we can go ahead and try, once we have the lock, to do everything that we wanted to do. And then finally, of course, release that lock. Now let's check this out. If I run this, 300, 600, 300, 600, this is going to happen correctly all of the time because they have the locks that they're supposed to have. See, there are no errors. Nothing's coming up in an inconsistency or anything wrong with the numbers. Now, what if I said, once this is over, once we've finished the do this, the initial thread, what if I don't release that lock? 
I'll comment that out. And if I run this, uh, I gotta pass. I have to write something in this in this code block statement. If I go ahead and run that, what's gonna happen? 300, and uh, nothing. Nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. Hello, where is my program? <laughs> well, keep in mind. This do after function, the second thread, the other thread, is not going to be able to do anything until the lock is released. So, because this thread hasn't released it yet, this thread can't do anything. It can't do jack squat. So, this is the major point that we have to drive home here. A lock has to be released before any other thread can access it and modify things. I'm going to have to kill this because I need to uh, actually have my program back. Now it's at 300, 600. Now it's at 300, 600, 300, 600. And X is never going to be at an in-between or an awkward place like 492 or 376 or any of those weird numbers that we had in between 300 and 600. Do you guys see what I'm getting at here? The way we can access shared resources between multiple threads is by using a lock or some locks to determine this thread can't open that shared resource or do anything with it until another thread is finished. And that's how we set it up in Python with the threading module. We use locks. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I feel like I actually had a good grasp on this one. I was able to show it to you guys in a pretty interesting way. We aren't having any discrepancies with the numbers. X is running perfectly fine because we are trying to deal with the lock and when we have it acquired then we're okay to work with it. Otherwise, we're just going to block until we have the lock accessible for us. Accessible for that thread. Okay. Cool. Thank you again, guys. <laughs> we were doing really well with this threading module. Uh, it's pretty hectic and kind of hard to follow, I know, but the more you the more you play with it, the more you do with it, the better, the better you'll feel and the more comfortable you'll feel. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.